we came up to Alaska because we wanted uh, some place just a little more frontier, a little more not as tame, and it's also so beautiful, it's totally inspirational. We've got the biggest mountains, the biggest fish, biggest bears, biggest everything, biggest state with the fewest people, that's always a plus. To leave a rhythm scattering the wind, dust tinting the tips of fingers as we slip into our new light. People just have this vague idea that it's this ice box with people and polar bears. To be able to share my experiences that I've had, whether it is like in the outdoors or whether it's here in the city, it helps me like serve as an ambassador for Alaska. I'm so grateful for the Alaska State Council on the Arts and for the NEA. Um, I think both have been very crucial. Well, the arts in Alaska are rich and vibrant. They're a central part of each of our communities. They're also a central part of our native culture and how the people who are from our communities and new to our communities relate to each other. With support from the NEA and the Alaska State Council on the Arts, the Fairbanks Arts Association is an umbrella organization that works with 44 other nonprofit arts-related organizations. The main goals of starting the All Nations Children was due to noticing the need for children to have a sense of pride in who they were. Because of my experience learning about my culture and Native song and dance and having it change me and made me feel better and stronger about who I was, I decided that we needed to form a dance group for children in order to give them that same sense of belonging and that same strength. I personally was a grant recipient from uh, various Alaska State Council of the Arts programs, such as the apprenticeship program, which allowed me to learn traditional button blanket making, which I also teach with the children of the All Nations Children. And the support of the National Endowment for the Arts is essential to keep our programs going here. What I do is uh, bronze casting. You don't take something and create it and be done. You start with uh, an original, whether it's in wood or clay. We take that piece, we get it to what we consider as perfect as we can get it, and then we proceed to destroy it about three times. But when you're done, you end up with a piece that's beautiful, and it's got the potential to last two, three, four hundred years. There's ancient pieces that are still around. The General Arts and Humanities Council used to be a small organization located in a basement that was infested with rats and other icky things. And um, when I took this job, the um, board of directors asked me to raise the level of awareness in the community about the Arts Council and also to find us a new place to live. And this building had been, it was a National Guard armory and had been retired. Our then mayor is a big art supporter and he came to me and said, do you suppose you could do anything with that building? We we did. <laughs> we probably have 35 to 40,000 people through in a year. Things in here from weddings to memorial services to performances. The National Endowment for the Arts, we really couldn't do anything that we're doing in this community without their basic both funding and um, moral support. <laughs> I would like to say Gunish Chish Hawa to the National Endowment for the Arts which is thank you in Schlinget and Haida.